The Lost Saint. Return of the Curse. The sacrifice took place in Wistar. With the presence of Wistar's guardian, Prince Alfred, Prince Robert, the great witch and the aldermen of Riverland, nobody could find Her Majesty, Queen Alice's body. She disappeared into thin air, after she bled till the last drop of her blood under the red moon, and was nowhere to be found. Only one empty coffin was left of her. Prince Harper's body was laying on the ground with his eyes open, and his cheeks wet from the tears he shed for his beloved Alyssum. After two centuries, the curse of the five realms was broken and all gates were vanished. All the barriers were destroyed, Riverland became defendless. Nevertheless, Prince Alfred could not care about his people's safety. He kept searching for Queen Alice's body like a madman. Even after her death he could not find peace. His intention was to burn her body and speared her ashes into the river, but she was lost. Each person presents in Wistar wiped for their loss, except Prince Alfred who kept searching and shouting Alyssa's name. Everyone pitied the prince as if he lost his sane. On the other hand, Prince Robert the cold-hearted one did his best to hide his feelings and to not let his tears out. He kept staring at his feet, but as time passed he could not hold it in any longer, so he left Wistar and rode to Riverland's palace to mourn for his queen all by himself. In her room, which was filled with her fragrant smell and her memory, even though she mistreated him all along, but her death left an open wound in his heart, and one unforgivable grudge for Prince Alfred. Chapter 1 Open Wound August 13, 2016 It was a warm Sunday afternoon. A typical boring warm day as always. A family of four lived in a large wooden house at the northern part of the city. The house was surrounded by tall cypresses, the mother of the family, who was a beautiful ginger-head woman, at her mid-forties was making tea in the kitchen while grumbling about the hot weather. The father, who was a retired police officer and a hunter at his late fifties, was watching TV in living room and polishing his shotgun. This house had two daughters who were upstairs in their own rooms. Susan, the older sister, who was twenty-two, was busy with her collage project and the younger one had the hardest time deciding what to wear. To her friends gathering, Suzanne was very successful in scientific work, but Alyssa, her younger sister in sports, liked to different poles. There was one thing they had in common, which was braided hair. Their father Jim, to braid their hair since they were little, Alyssa stole one of Suzanne's dresses and left for her date with her friends, without making an audience. She was meeting with two of her friends at the cafe next to her gym. She was the last to arrive, but did not receive any complaints, as she was the glue that stuck the group together. So, are you ready for the Olympic selection? With this question, she injected stress and excitement into Elisa and Maddie's body. Maddie threw some French fries at Shay's face and protested, have you forgotten the whole reason of us hanging out today? Maddie was trying to make Shay understand something with gesture. Maddie was the sensitive one of the group, and Shay was the one with no feelings. Alyssa was normal between the three of them. In order not to let me think about the competition. I know all your tricks. Come on, Maddie. Alyssa brought laughter back to the table as usual. They decided to celebrate the last days of summer they had together, and the fact they were all old enough. To drink bear, the three girls drifted apart outside the cafe. Shay took a taxi. Elisa and Maddie walked the way home. Their houses were just two blocks away. Sun was about to set, and the sky was getting filled with heavy clouds. Small winds started to blow and raise their dresses up which was the reason of them getting attacked by drunk guys. But little they knew that Alyssa could take them all out. In less than a minute, she practically grew up in the gym. One of the drunk guys had a beer bottle in his hand. He smashed it into the wall and cut Alyssa's arm with it. Maddie's sensitive one on the other hand. 
stayed back and cried the whole time. Her tears were flowing like water. After a few minutes, some of the local people came to the rescue and the drunk guys ran away. We should take to the hospital. Your arm is bleeding, Maddie said while blowing her nose into a dirty tissue. Alyssa, on the other hand, did not shed a tear. Even though she was in horrible pain, it's just a simple cut, let's go home, Alyssa disagreed. Maddie gave her the dirty tissue that she wiped her nose with it to slow the bleeding. The two girls thought that the situation could not get any worse. But a heavy storm started and soon the rain turned into flood. The night sky lightened up by each lightning. It felt like the end of the world. No one could tell if it was the rain or Maddie's tears on her. Face. The flood got heavier by each second and there was nowhere to run. Elisa grabbed her wounded arm and tried to find a way out of that situation, while her blood was leaking and mixing with the water flowing under her feet. She succeeded in her hard attempt to find a spot to survive the thunderstorm. Come on, on 2nd Street. Alyssa took Maddie's hand and tried to push her to run over the safe spot she found. But Maddie's feet were stuck to the ground and shaking like she was breathing electro shock. I can't feel my legs, Ailey. Maddie's words were hard to follow because of all the sobbing and nose blowing. Alyssa could not take any risks, so she left her friend alone and rushed down to Second Street. Alyssa walked alongside the wall to restrain the wind and flood. When she reached the Second Street, she could not believe her eyes. That street was the only place in the city where the flood did not flow. Like a safe place for wounded ones. Once she stepped foot on Second Street, Alyssa started to lose control of her body. Her hearing ability decreased and like her friend Maddie, she lost the ability to move like a sculpture in a museum. The only difference was she had a beating heart in the whole town. Everyone was home except the two girls who were stuck in thunder and could not find a way out of there. But one old man, he was called James, witnessed the whole adventure from the bottom of the brim of his hat. He did not have enough time to decide which girl to save. The selfish one who abandoned her friend to save herself, or the weaker one whose, whose tears were the cause of the water under their feet. In his conclusion, the noble thing to do was to save the crying girl. But in his long life of seven centuries, he learnt to avoid trouble. He could not let Elisa come back to his realm. But one thing was certain. The world did revolve around her. James ran to Elisa and pulled her up on his shoulders and ran to the passenger's side and put her down on her feet. That was the moment that Elisa gained her strength back. She punched James in the face. Little he moved and looked for Maddie. But she was nowhere to be found once James picked her up. Flood and storm stopped. Sky was bright by moon's light. Everything went back to exactly how it was. What did you do to Maddie? She was standing right there. Alyssa accused him of harming her friend. In her mind, there was no other explanation than him harming Maddie. Isn't it a little late for you to worry about your friend? You left her to save yourself with no hesitation. Some would admire it. I wonder who did you get this moral from? Your father or your mother James observed her whole body and reached her arm. He noticed the wound. So, this is what started all of this. He took a small cloth from his pocket and covered her wound. Elisa was in pain as he covered her wound. She closed her eyes and frowned. Why didn't you help Maddie like you did for me? Elisa asked him. It was either you or her. I chose you and yet I did not succeed. James's voice was filled with grief and sorrow. His words were like an unsolved puzzle to the little girl in front of him. James was an enormous tall man and compared to Alyssa. She had no chance of winning a fight against him, so she ran home to her father, the only light in the darkness of her life, who were there to rescue his little girl in the depths of the most raging ocean at any cost.
Little she knew that his light shines from the deepest part of the ocean and following that will cause her nothing but agony and death. However, the yellow-eyed man worried about Alyssa, but he could not acknowledge her of who she was and what she was capable of. It was not time yet. Like a little butterfly running to the flame, Alyssa ran to her father. Her father's voice echoed in her head, Whatever happened, come to me. She passed the streets without knowing that. She has been followed by the person who could save her from what was about to come. What she did not know was that her father was the man behind all her misery. While running home, Alice's wound bled and her blood marked the way home. Nothing was powerful enough to remove the marking on the ground. Alyssa reached their house. Nothing else mattered. Not even the pain in her arm. She rang the bell. There was no response. She rang again. Still no response. Madness like her name flourished itself in her. She started yelling, Dad. It's me. She had hit the door with her fist so hard that her knuckles were full of blood. A big bloody circle was created in the middle of the big wooden door. Screaming and attracting attention of any creature round, James could not watch his little. Princess suffer no longer. He stepped in and rang the bell on the country. Door opened. Alyssa's father. Jim came out of the frame and looked around, while Alyssa stood there frozen. Her father could not see her nor hear her. She was invisible. Her mother and Suzanne came to the door to check what the problem was. But they faced an empty street too. Alyssa's only arrow in the darkness broke in half. There was no strength in her knees for standing still. She collapsed and cried not for the pain in her knees or her arm, but for the pain in her heart. Her family was in front of her, and yet they were unreachable to her. In her mind it all happened because of that old yellow-eyed man. She pulled all her strength together to find that man and make him to change everything back like it was before. She turned around and found him staring at her the whole time with a crooked smile. These were the words he said, Welcome back to Wistar. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't kill you right now. Alyssa said these words with anger and hatred while rushing to him. She tackled him down in one blink of eye. James found himself on the ground with Alyssa sitting on him. She was ready to attack. But James blocked her punches. The two of them stared at each other's eyes and stayed still, until Elisa gave up and let go of him. There was no way she could defeat him. You might think you have the upper hand here, child, with your vengeance. But let me tell you something. I've seen thousands of strong men. I've fought them. I've betrayed them. Most of them are dead now. And yet none of them could defeat me. I am invincible in this land. James said his words looking down at Alyssa. He could see the fear in her eyes, which hadn't changed a bit, since she was a newborn stuck in Wistar for 182 years. It was not his intention to frighten his beloved child, but he had to make her docile to avoid any future problems. Take me home, and I won't bother you. Alyssa did not let him witness her fear. She dictated her words to him like an order. She might not have been aware, but her true self was coming out of her soul. In the middle of their argument, one thing caught their eyes. A police car stopped by their house, and Jim immediately came out of the house. Jim has ordered the whole police office to search for her. Daughter, but she was nowhere to be found. Anxiety was the only thing shown on his face. His hands shook and his palms were wet. Alisa could bear the pain of hers, but not when it came to her father. Rage was all she got, and she could only free herself from that poisonous feeling. By attacking the man who was standing in front of her, she gripped the collar of his brown old coat so tightly that the fabric fell apart, but, with her teary eyes, she was begging James to send her home. I only brought you here for your own safety. I do not intend to see you suffer. You will return to your father by sunrise, James said. He wiped her tears off her cheeks, which came to surprise by Alyssa. 
James's promise of returning Alyssa to her father softened the tension between them a little. But still there were thousands of questions in Alyssa's mind that remained unanswered. James let her lurk around her house knowing nothing could harm her. While she was in his realm, I cannot stay by your side any longer. There are places I must be at once. Stay here and you'll be safe till sunrise, then you can crawl back to your father. James said while observing the whole area for any danger. The moment he wanted to leave her, Alyssa took his hand and stopped him. How come I remember your face, but I do not know who you are? Alyssa asked. Her eyes reminded him of the time he took care of this little girl. All by himself. Those 182 years that he took care of a newborn who did not age because of the magic in Wistar. Because we've met before, you may not remember my name because you were so little at that time. It's James. Then he disappeared and a breeze came with smell of expired meat. Like smell of dead meat which made Alyssa feel nauseous after James left. She had nothing to do but to wait for the sun to rise and all these miseries be over. So, she sat at the side of street in front of their house and fell asleep there, while James was searching Wistar and checking all five gates in his realm. To make sure nothing could harm her, no outsider could enter his land. The great witch Victoria, who was under order of Madoc XI, entered Wistar without catching his eyes. She went straight to Alyssa's blood scent. Her blood that was spilled from her in the street made Victoria's job very easy to find Alyssa. She found her sleep, ready to be killed. Victoria a creature with two giant black wings, silver hair, purple eyes, pointy ears freed her black spiders to bite Alyssa. In only a few seconds the spiders were all over her body, and by Victoria's order they bit her at once. Alyssa woke up in fear and pain in her chest, which caused the spiders to fall on the ground. She saw Victoria in front of her and was ready to defend herself, but soon her body was paralyzed, and she could not move. At that moment only James could rescue her. So she shouted his name as loud as she could. It didn't take long for the rest of her senses to fail, before she lost her sight. She saw the veins in her legs turning black, she could feel the venom spreading in her body until it reached her heart, there it was. She felt it, her heart stopped.